This video is a live demo of how arrays can be used in a real life scenario, where I'm going to share my terminal and code a small but fun to use script to understand the benefits of storing data in a structure that allows us to access such data in an indexed format. The script we are about to code will return a random food choice out of a predefined list each time we execute it. The idea for this script came out as I worked with a team of 20 people at an office and we all went to have lunch together on Fridays and we wanted each person to have an equal chance of going to their favorite food place in a given cycle. For that, each one added a food choice that was added to an array. Then we created a small script in Bash that selected an array index randomly to print one single food option to the terminal each time the script got executed. So in this script, we'll be doing something similar and every time a food option gets printed, we should discard it so the random index selector in the script doesn't pick it up again and again. This way, we give an equal chance for each food to eventually come out. There is a concept called manipulating data in memory, which refers to initializing or modifying the values from a script or program directly in the variables. In this case, for example, if we execute the script and we initialize it with predefined elements, and then we remove an element of the array just by referencing the array variable in the script, the next time we run the script, the value will be there, as we are doing everything in memory, or in other words, during the execution time. To address this issue, we are going to use a persistent storage method, which means any form of storage that keeps the data after restarting an application or rebooting a machine, such as a hard drive disk. Common strategies for persistent storage systems are databases, but in this case, we are going to use a simple plain text file, which means the array will read the data from a file and every time an element of the array needs to be deleted, the script will go back and remove such element from the file. This way, the next time we execute the script, the array will be initialized only with the remaining options. To explain how the script operates, we'll have to introduce a couple of new concepts very quickly. First, to initialize the array from a file, we are going to use a shell built-in called mapfile. Mapfile reads input data and stores such data in an array format, and it's available in bash 4.0 and onwards. The dash "-t option we use is to remove any trailing new line. Then, we will use a special shell variable called random, all in upper cases, which we can access by doing echo to random, and this will return to standard output a random integer between 0 and 32,767. Okay, so let's get started. First, let's create a file called food underscore places with some food choices to test our script with. Let me add some random food choices that I can think of really quickly just so we can move forward. Okay, now let's create a script called lunch underscore selector datasage using Vim. So the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use two Vim commands. So for that, I'm going to type a colon first and then set number and hit enter. And this is to display the line numbers in the file. And then I'm going to use colon and then syntax on and I'll hit enter. And this is to highlight the code syntax, which you'll see very soon. Okay, so the third thing we'll do is use declare-a to declare an array variable called launch options. This will store the food choices that we'll be accessing each time the script gets executed. Now I'm going to declare a few additional variables such as the work underscore dir, which is a good practice as it works as an answer in case we need to traverse multiple directories as we'll always have a way to go back to the directory where the script is located. So to assign a value to work underscore dear, we are going to use the read link command and the special shell variable zero, which will return the absolute path of the directory where our script is located. Uh, all of this is just for a good practice. I'm accustomed to doing this in almost every script I write. All right, so now I'm going to declare the food places variable that will reference a file name with the contents of the different food choices we want to use. See how I'm using the work underscore dear variable to express explicitly that the food places file should be located in the same directory as the script. 
Now I'm going to create a terminate function to handle events that result in having to terminate the script with a non-zero exit status. A good practice for the terminate function is to use local variables by using the local modifier. And then the dash r that I'm adding is for read only. This is just for a good practice in style, but I recommend you to follow the same principles. Observe how the code variable, which will have the value of an exit code that I'll pass, uses a default parameter expansion so that if no value is passed, we will default to an exit code of 150. Now that I have a variable message, I'm going to redirect it to file descriptor 2, as it should be treated as standard error. At the end, I use exit followed by the code variable, which holds the value of the exit code we'll terminate our script with. The reason why I'm creating this terminate function is because I want to add a quick guard clause statement here in case the food underscore places dot txt doesn't exist. So we can exit the script with a meaningful error message. For this, we are going to create an if statement that will evaluate to true if the food underscore places dot txt doesn't exist, for which we are going to call the terminate function with a message and an exit code of 150. All right, now that we have most of the basic script structure that follows the good practices we've learned throughout this course, let's actually code the behavior. For this, I'm going to use functions for the most part. So let me create a function called fillout underscore array, which will have the map file that's t command that we talked about earlier. Using this command is going to initialize the launch options array variable by passing an input to the array with the contents of the food underscore places dot txt as the value of the array's variable. All right, so now let's call the function here and just below, I'm going to add an echo command to expand the array variable to verify that this is actually working correctly. Let me save and close this to execute the script really quickly. Okay, so the fillout array function is working fine. Now what's next is to add an if statement to finish with an error if the food underscore places dot txt happen to be empty. Because in the next pieces of code, we will be assuming launch underscore options array variable will be initialized with the contents of the dot txt file. And we want to exit if such file is empty, right? So for this, I'm going to use an array length expansion technique to count the elements of the array by placing a hash symbol before the name of the array variable, and then the add symbol inside the square brackets to access all elements. Inside the if statements, I'm going to add a call to the terminate function with a meaningful error message and a custom exit code. Now, let's try this with no data in the food underscore places dot txt to see if this is working fine. To quickly remove all of the elements in the food underscore places dot txt, we have two quick options. One is by using vim. So I'm going to do that right now and then I'll show you the other one later in the script. So if I open the file using vim and then I type a colon followed by a number one, then a comma, followed by a dollar symbol and the D character, and then I press enter, all the elements of the file will be deleted. So to save, I'll just type colon and then W and Q characters, which means write and quit. I'll teach you the other technique as we progress with the script, as we'll need our script to actually do something similar at some point. All right, so I'm going to open the script again using Vim. And now that I'm thinking about it, I'm going to declare a constant exit code for whenever the launch options array has zero elements and for whenever the food underscore places dot txt file doesn't exist. Let me just uh, pass the constant instead of the hard-coded numbers we have in the if statements we just created. All right, so this is a step up in style. We have three things left to do, I believe. First, let's create a variable called index, which will be a random number to access each array element. For this, we are going to use an arithmetic expansion with a random special shell variable. 
we are going to use a technique to create random integer values based on the number of elements in the array by using the percent symbol, which works as a modulo operator. Now we are going to print a random element to see if this worked. So let me save and close the script and I'll execute it really quickly. Okay, so here I'm executing the script multiple times to verify that each time I run it, a random element is being returned and it is working. But as you can see, there is a problem here. We sometimes have repeated values being printed to the terminal. So to fix this, we need to remove an element after it's been selected. For that, we just need to unset an element of an array by using the technique we learned in the previous lectures. We are going to pass the index variable inside the square brackets of the arrays variable to remove the element that was picked by the random special shell variable in the previous step. Now, the last thing we need is we need to update the food places.txt with the new elements of the array. So we just deleted an element and we want to update the food underscore places with just the remaining elements. So for that, let's create a function called update underscore options. Inside this function, we are going to redirect the values of launch underscore options array to the food places.txt file. Observe how, instead of using echo, this time I'm going to use printf as I want each array element to be separated by a line break instead of a space or something different. Now this should work just fine. So let's try it out. Okay, so we can see how this is effectively picking a random element each time and removing it from the file. But after the file is empty, we get to standard output an empty space just here. What's happening is that when the array is empty, we redirect a line break to the file. So each time we run the script, mapfile-t initializes the array with an empty string value, which we keep redirecting to the file at the end. Instead of this, we'd like to make sure the file gets truncated after we finish going through all of the options, similar to what we did when we deleted the values from the food places using Vim, but this time we'll use a greater than redirection symbol. To do this, let's modify the update options function to include an if statement. When the array is empty, which means that the number of elements is equal to zero, then we will use a single greater than symbol with a no output command to the left to redirect nothing to the food underscore places .txt file. On the else portion, we will keep the previous printf command that helps us update the food places file with the remaining array elements. In this particular case, we need to use an else statement as we don't want both redirections to run. We want either one or the other. Okay, so let me save the script and I'll execute it, see what happens. Upon executing the script multiple times, we see how it returns different values each time. And after we run out of options, a message saying no food options left is printed to the terminal. So that is it for this demo. I hope you enjoyed this exercise.